let's go back to the basic question. Does the Abishta need your mitzvah? The answer is more than you can possibly imagine. More than you need anything, including breathing. And the only example that we have for that is marriage. In a marriage, a real good marriage, a husband needs his wife more than he needs to breathe. And that's why he will sacrifice his life for her. That she should live even if he stops breathing. And of course, the wife to the husband, same thing. So that's the best muscle that we have for our relationship with the Ebishter. Now, when you decide to do a mitzvah or to be lazy and not do the mitzvah, the question is not, will you go to Gehenna? The question is not, will you suffer? The question is, will he suffer? Who are you doing this to? Whose need are you neglecting? That's the difference between a chosid and a misnagid. A misnagid worries about the mitzvah, the what. What am I doing? Is it a deraisa? Is it a derabonon? Is it absolutely necessary? Will I go to heaven? Will I have Gan Eden? A big piece of Gan Eden? To the chosid, never mind what. Who? Whose mitzvah? Asher kiddishanu b'mitzvah sov. That's what's important. It's his mitzvah. And he needs it from you, not from anybody else. And how much does he need it? Bligvul. Infinitely. Now, when you do a mitzvah, it's a whole different thing. See, that's why hashkafa is important. Hashkafa means think about the other, not about yourself. Thinking about yourself is not hashkafa. That's just being you. Hashkafa means to be able to see. To see what? To see the other person. Why don't we learn about Hashem? I mean, like, we are, but like, why are we learning how to do this first? That's why you came here. <laughs> but stop and think for a moment. We didn't create ourselves. We didn't even ask to be created. We really don't need to be created. We don't need. And yet the Ibishta creates us. And we are born. And we go through all sorts of painful, the miserable the disappointments and, and pain. And, and it's all worthwhile for what? For me to be happy. I would be happy if I did none of those. Just leave me alone, I'll be happy. Don't create me and I'll never complain. <laughs> so what is this all about? The answer is, who? Who created? You know what Shema stands for? Su'u. And? Su'u mori me'neichem. That's hashkafa. Hashkafa means look up. Look up. Su'u morim e'neichem. Look up. And what are you going to discover? What? Or who? You're going to discover me, bara e'le. You're going to discover who needs all this. And when you realize how he needs it, then when you do a mitzvah, it's a very different mitzvah then it really does connect you to him. Not just get you to Gan Eden. Yeah? So are we saying that it's not the wrong and it's the right? Ah, uh, yes. <laughs> no, they just don't know better. better. Oh, they say it's terrible. Like, you can't just say that a local dude has been doing everything wrong. So like yeah, I, I don't know which group it is anymore because <laughs> they don't call themselves Misnagdim anymore, so we can't find them. But we're talking about the philosophy. In fact, today, there are very few people who don't already have Hasidish ideas in their head, even though they never learned Hasidus. Like the Pintalayid, that's a Hasidish concept. 
Neshama. They never heard of Neshama before. Chassidus. Uh, um, Dira Betachtainim, Hashgacha Pratis. Everybody knows these things, and they used to be only Chassidim. And even Tshuva, that about Tshuva is an important person, they never, they never thought that. In fact, 50 years ago, when the Rebbe started saying you have to invite people into Yiddishkeit who are not, they said, why? Why? Leave them alone. They're happy. They're not Orthodox. They don't have to do mitzvahs. <laughs> that has changed. So there are very few people who are not deeply influenced by chassidus. But we're talking about you know, the old-fashioned concept. So a philosophy that doesn't make sense you have to make fun of. Well, we thought exactly like that before you spoke. So it's like. So that's why the Baal Shem Tov came with a panic. <laughs> We've got to do something about this. This is not good. We're forgetting who we're dealing with. So now let's go back to the original question. What did the Baal Shem Tov love about Anoshim Pshutim? They didn't know what a mitzvah is. They knew. They knew who it was for. They knew who was asking. And that was enough. And sometimes Talmidei Chachamim forget who. What if they just knew who the same way like a mitzvah was? They were doing the mitzvahs because they didn't know what a mitzvah was. What if they were doing a who because, oh, well, my father served Hashem and he did these mitzvahs that I don't even It's for Hashem. He knows it's for Hashem. That's the thing. The Anoshim Pshutim are very good at who. They're not good at what. Talmidei Chachamim are very good at what. They're not so good at who. So you got to be careful who you marry. <laughs> you got to marry somebody who's good with the who, not with the what. Because you're not a what, you're a who. <laughs> you're a who. <laughs> I'm not a what, I'm a who. <laughs> <laughs>